everyone you care about, everyone you love, they're gonna die. Crisis on Earth X, the two-night crossover event, starts Monday, November 27th on The CW. Come on. Hey everybody, so they just dropped a whole bunch of teasers for the four-way crossover, so I'm going to break that down, but I also made my Arrow Episode 6 video, so I'll do that too. But we'll start with the crossover stuff first, because that's what everybody's freaking out about. So if you're just finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll explain what the schedule is for the next couple of episodes at the end of the video too, and there is a new round of that Flash Ring giveaway. Starting with the big stuff first, we get a better look at the evil versions of the characters. So we have Reverse Flash, Tom Cavanaugh, or called the Blitzen Flash of this Earth, Overgirl, and the evil version of Oliver, whatever his actual name is going to be. So this is their sort of evil team up. We see the good characters, the Ray, the resistance of this Earth, so that explains where his character comes from. There's also a bunch of wedding pictures. Obviously, that's the first part of the crossover. Then there's the invasion with all these stormtroopers capturing them. It looks like they capture Felicity and Iris and take them back to their version of Star Labs. The Blitz and Flash giving Felicity the angry helicopter treatment. It looks like they're trying to perform some sort of experiment. So maybe they're trying to combine universes or do some grand cosmic thing. It sounds like it's going to be much worse than just try to kill all the people on this Earth. But I just love some of these costumes. It's the first HD look we've had at some of these evil versions of the characters. The funny thing about this is that it's them standing shoulder to shoulder, it's still not all of the characters that are part of the crossover because there's no Firestorm, you don't see Killer Frost in here, there's no Harrison Wells, so obviously there's going to be a bunch of big fight scenes. This just seems like it's going to be one of the climactic ones. So they didn't say which episode in particular this is from because remember it's four separate episodes on two nights. You get a better look at Killer Frost, comic book costume, and obviously Citizen Cold's costume. We know that he's probably not going to be coming back for a little while after this big crossover, so maybe he goes out in some ambiguous blaze of glory. Just ambiguous enough to make you wonder whether or not he's still alive. But the way they kill characters and bring them back in the Arrowverse gets really convoluted. So if Captain Cold comes back after this, I'm just expecting him to be a different version of the character. But you also get your first look at the live action version of the Ray. So he has crazy light based powers. And really the rest of these pictures just show you them on the Wave Rider getting ready for some big encounter. So this seems like it's one of the later episodes of the crossover, maybe even the Legends of Tomorrow episode. And that will be the final episode. Obviously, there are a lot of characters that'll be in the crossover that don't appear anywhere in these pictures. So just because you don't spot somebody doesn't mean that they're not around. But what'll probably happen is, is they'll release another trailer next Monday or sometime early next week because we are getting really close. So whenever that happens, I'll post a new video about it. But just leave all your questions in the comments below. Moving into Aero Deathstroke stuff, probably one of the best episodes in a long time. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I would normally do a top 10 episode video. But I'll start with all the Deathstroke storyline and Easter eggs, then I'll do the Richard Dragon stuff. But the whole idea here is that they want to leave the Deathstroke character in a place where he can still be doing stuff in the Arrowverse whether or not they're actually able to bring him on the show. So obviously you know that there's a Deathstroke movie that's going to be happening. I don't want to do spoilers for Justice League yet, but there is some stuff in that movie that explains a little bit about what's going to be going on. But they did that really cool reverse Star Wars narrative where Deathstroke, the Darth Vader of this equation, is trying to save his son, Luke Skywalker. Like imagine Star Wars if it was the other way around. Luke Skywalker redeems Darth Vader, but what if Darth Vader was the one trying to redeem Luke Skywalker? So Manu Bennett's performance was great. I love his crazy eyes, like when he's reacting to stuff like, holy shit, the first time you see Shadow in the flashbacks where she starts appearing to him again and he spins around. Probably one of the best scenes in the episode. But we get to see the origin of the modern Deathstroke costume. That's our new prototype. Should be ready in less than a year. Just to explain the flashback timeline. So what happens is you start seven years ago. They basically found him washed up on the Philippines. So imagine the season two finale in the flashbacks where Oliver pokes his eye out and then everything blows up and Slade thinks that Oliver's dead. Oliver thinks that Slade is dead and they both go about their business until you see Deathstroke resurface in this scene during the second half of Arrow season two in present day. So the way Deathstroke explained it is, is that after the Amazo blew up, 
the Mirakuru allowed him to survive the ocean swim that it took to get all the way to the Philippines. That's where he was found. They brought him to this hospital. So from start to finish in these scenes, it's about two years, like right before he heads to Starling City to start harassing Oliver, like where he kills all of the other people that he's training with there, takes the suit. When he's in the hospital was around the time that Oliver was leaving Hong Kong and making his way back to the island. Then once Deathstroke starts to go crazy and hallucinate Shadow again over that period of time, that's when Oliver was doing the Bratva flashbacks. So the funny thing is, is that while Slade has been spending all this time with his son training, slowly going crazy, Oliver has actually left and come back to the island multiple times. Because remember, he left and went to Hong Kong. Then he came back for all the Constantine stuff, the Tayana stuff that happened during the season four flashbacks. Then he left to go to Russia to do the Bratva stuff then came back for the end of the season five flashbacks. So like he's just been bouncing back and forth between the island while Slade has slowly been going nuts. But then the flashbacks end with that broadcast from the pilot episode, like they literally cut and pasted that from the pilot, which is why I think the flashbacks work so well, because you remember watching all those season one, season two scenes where they're fighting, Slade starts going crazy, so just in general, I'm hoping that however many more seasons Arrow goes, they're able to do their flashbacks like this, where you bring a character like Roy back in the flashbacks for him, fill in the gaps about what he's been doing this whole time. But you can also have him flash back to moments from season one, season two, season three. The big universe building moment at the end is when Joe reveals that Grant Wilson exists. You have another son that mother never told you about. So we officially now have Grant Wilson Ravager on the TV show. But what the TV show has done is it's changed the order in which Deathstroke's children have been born. So obviously we haven't heard about Rose Wilson yet. We only know about Grant and Joe. In the comics, Grant Wilson is the oldest. He becomes the first version of Ravager. It obviously what the TV show sounds like it's doing is it's gradually turning Joseph into the Ravager character that Grant Wilson was in the comics. Maybe we'll see that future version of Grant again that we saw in Legends of Tomorrow. Moving into the Richard Dragon stuff, if you're not familiar, he's a big comic book character. There have been a couple different versions of him in the comics. There's the classic version who's more of an Iron Fist style character. He's like a kung fu master that trains people. He's white. The New 52 version is called Ricardo Diaz Jr. He's a John Diggle villain from the Green Arrow comics. So they're actually doing a very comic book accurate version of the character specific to the New 52 comics. But the twist with this version of the comic book character is, is that he takes the name Richard Dragon after he kills the person that had the name previously. So he wasn't always called that. His name has always been Ricardo Diaz Jr. He's the son of a drug dealer from Star City that was killed by John Diggle. So he's seeking his revenge against Diggle. So the minor tweak to the TV show version is that he was a drug dealer, a member of the Scorpions gang, when the Glades sort of blew up in the first couple of seasons, got thrown in prison, then somehow was able to blackmail or kill enough people to get the State Department to let him out, and then basically killed anyone associated with his past. So all the paper trail, anybody that booked him, all the law enforcement officials, the whole thing with the Diggle steroids plot was a little weird, but they had to wrap this up sooner rather than later, so I'm happy that he came clean to everybody. But it's basically the end of the Diggle-led Team Arrow, because Oliver's back now, and obviously he can't get the meds anymore, so he's still going to have the shakes, so Oliver's going to have to put the costume back on. But as far as we know, Richard Dragon on the TV show is just like a really big drug kingpin. He has no greater ambition. So we'll see if there's anything bigger behind that or if there's any intersection with the Kate and James villain plot. Because right now you have like a couple different villains on the TV show and they have nothing to do with each other. But what's going to happen next is, is because next week is Thanksgiving, the episode is titled Thanksgiving, and that'll be the lead-in to the four-way crossover. Because right after that, that next week will be the first night of the crossover. So you literally go from Thursday to Monday to like everything exploding in everyone's faces across the multiverse. But there is a new round of that Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. I'll announce a new winner when I post my next Justice League video because there's still a ton of Justice League stuff we need to talk about. My next one will be my spoiler review. That'll post on Saturday. Then I'll start doing Easter eggs. You can click here for brand new Flash in that Wonder Woman crossover scene. And you can click here for my brand new Black Panther trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.